I want to get my cleaning supplies over here now. There's my airbrush cleaning solvent. And Neo Echo also sent me some of these. I've never used these before today. And I will never not have these now. So I'm going to order a bunch of these from them. Uh, they said they're going to have a web page up and running with all their stuff on it. These come with the kit. They're uh, bristle bottle brushes made for the kit for the size and everything. Little reamers in case things get clogged. And I will do a clog video on how to unclog. I have a few of the real nice Q-tips. And the... the uh, wrench. I'm going to put the wrench, I'm going to put these, I'm going to put these back in here. I just wanted to show you what we had. I'm going to get another cup out here. I use a lot of these, like I said. Put that there. Oh, uh, the other thing I did, and I didn't do it, I always put this on. I didn't put it on because I wanted you to see the paint going through it. But when you're painting, this just drops on there. It keeps dust from getting down in there. But I, I left it off today just to show you how things were going. So let's put that in there. We got this. We got our pipette for the cleaning solvent. Crack the knuckles. Straighten them out. Let's clean. And if you do this um, every time, this thing's going to last you forever. No kidding around break this out right now. Do, 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 do. Listen to that little airbrush. <laughs> I do. I love it. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't hear a, a, a car drive through a forest before. Look at this. See, I got the paint in there. Let's, let's do some. Give ourselves a break here. I put that all the way down in a hole and suck this out a few times. It just, it, I don't know if it helps or not, but it helps me. Now let's clean out this cup. Look at that. I've done paper towels a lot and it just does not, it stinks compared to doing this. I'm just will not look at it. How quick. Nice and easy, that cleaned out. No, we're not throwing that away yet because we're going to use that a bunch. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this. I'm going to put it in the sprayer here. I'm going to pull the gun. And we're going to spray out all the little bit of paint that's still in there. Go back and forth a few times. Then I'm going to come over on the side. My filters get changed often because I do this to it. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. Those filters, I can get those um, at Home Depot real cheap. I put a good squirt in one cup, and then I take another cup, and I put another shot in there. Just like that. And there's a madness for my method. So now we're going to do... Pull this out. So you got paint inside here. That looks really cool, doesn't it? That's a neat color, but I'm going to take this first. Let's do it this way. I'm going to take this off first. That way we're not going to mess this needle up by taking everything else off. Pull that. I'm loosening this up, and the needle pulls straight out. Just like that. Look at the paint on the needle. Now what we'll do, we're going to set that right there for now. Take this cleaning brush, find a nice or cleaning rag, find a nice set, and just run it up and down it a couple of times. Baby your needles. Always go this way, too, because that end is sharp. It'd go to the bone quick, fast, and in a hurry. Your needle's clean. That's all you got to really do to that. I'm going to set that back here. Um, my stand is in the way for where I put all my stuff, usually. So I'm kind of out of sorts that way. Now I'm going to take this apart, and what I'm doing is I'm taking off, this is your jet, this is the jet cover, and the cone. 
Uh, it comes with two of these cones. I like this round one, but sometimes they stick and you got to kind of tighten up on it right in that solvent. This one too, right in the solvent. And now we need our little wrench. And I'm going to take this need this jet off too. And I do this every single time I finish. Now I don't do it when I, I, uh, change paint. I don't take this completely down like this. What I do then is I, I clean the, the cup out real good. I run some solvent through it. I put my finger on the end and, and use, you know, blow it backwards into it and loosen all the paint up in there. And then I just keep running solvent back and forth until I get good clean um, paint. Now I'm taking this down all the way up. I always take my cup off. We'll set this down real quick. Grab our rag again. Wipe that cup off. Be mindful there is a gasket on this cup. So be mindful of that. Get your finger in there. And get this good and clean. The cleaner you get it now, the easier it's going to be down the road. Because if you're a, if you let it go, it's going to catch up to you. I'm going to take the, this. These are nice. Look at that. I've never used these before either until just a couple of weeks ago. But these are so nice. They cost a little bit more than Q-tips, but as you'll see. They clean a lot better than Q-tips, too. So we'll get in there. And we got all the paint out. Look at that. We're brand spanking new. Nothing left. Everything's pretty. Give that in an air wipe. Put that down. Let's move on to this right now. Now's where our bristle brushes come in handy. I'll start out by wiping this off. Because I can already see they're on the threads. <laughs> I think I'm, I, I didn't tighten this up really tight. And I, I'm leaking just a little bit. So that's just popping on and off. There we go. Get that. I'm just trying to get that fairly clean. Now we're going to take this and we're going to go in here. And I'm going to clean those threads out. Get that down in there. There's a bunch of paint down in there. See there? I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to grab this and open it up. And I'm going to take some of this. Run it straight through. Just to loosen things up. And you saw I just used a little bit of paint today. So it's not destroy it in there. But on a long day where you, you're painting a whole kit, that can get pretty dang full of stuff. Do it again. And I know you're saying, hey, you're just putting paint back through paint. Well, give me a minute because I'm not going to be. I'm just getting it to be where it's all broken up. And look, if you look in there, uh, it's clean as a whistle already. I really don't need to go any farther, but I'm going to just to show you. I'm going to take my bottle brush. I like using the bigger one. I'm going to dip that straight in there. I only do that when it's clean. And I'm going to come in and go down this way with it. And look, there's nothing on it. Nothing at all. Clear that off. Now I'm going to take this small one. Straight in, straight out, and I'm going to go in the hole. Boy, this is a lot harder to do on film. And I'm going to go back and forth this way a few times just to break all that paint up like that. Set those off to the side. Take the pipette one more time. And boom, look at that. Now that is clean. Okay, but what I want to do... One more time, because I'm going to take a little bit out of here, and I'm going to run clear through there. Shake it out real good. Let's get the rag. 
Find a clean spot on the rag. Wipe that out. Be mindful of this O-ring right here. That that If that O-ring goes bad, you lose that seal and um, you won't get paint to pull down through the, through the suction. It'll just bubble up back into your uh, into your cup. So there we go. We're done there. Let's set that down. Grab my eyes. Now you're wondering why I have this thing here. I'll show you right now. There's nothing worse than chasing these teeny parts all over the floor. Because I'll tell you what, that I'm like I said, I'm using a number five tip. I don't think you would ever find it. So I take this, I run them around, kind of shake them, blow uh, solvent through them. Just while they're in the cup. And then we'll grab my tweezers that I forgot to bring over to you. I need my tweezers because my snicker bar fingers here. So let's take these out of here. Two and the jet. Look at how small that is. See that O-ring on there? That O-ring is important. Put that down. Now, we are cooking with gas here. Let's start with the jet. What I do with this because I have this in the way. Usually all my cleaning stuff is all tucked right in here. I take this with this jet over top of that. See this has a cone to it with a flat like a reamer. Put that in the jet and just gently. I don't push down hard on there at all. Just kind of gently run that around to make sure that there's nothing in there. Um, trust me in the long run that will save you a lot of time because if that jet gets clogged you will not have good paint and this does not take nearly as long as it does while I'm doing it on film either because my big head's in the way now there's a gasket in here remember I told you that little o-ring so just bring this down and snug it up. You don't have to crank on this. Just make it snug, okay? That's it. You don't want to tighten it up so much because you'll end up snapping that off or thread, ruining the threads in there. This is a tiny, delicate little piece. So that's all you need to do with that. Set that over there for just a second while we grab this. Grab my Cone cleaner, where'd I put it? There it is. I'll run that in here just all the way to the end. Clean that out, make sure there's nothing in there. Take our pipette, just a dab will do ya. Just grab a dab, take it over here, and run it through. I don't think I even had a dab there. Dab it and run it through, just push it right through. Just get that all cleaned up nice. I will grab my towel, come over here, wipe everything off, check it out, make sure it looks good. Look at that brand new brass in there. If you do this every time, you're done for the night. Because think about it, you might, well, we're back, it didn't even hit the ground. But it, if you do this every time, You'll save yourself a lot of problems because think about it, you're done for the night. Um, you might be done for the week with with airbrushing. Sometimes my airbrush will sit idle for more than a week at a time. Easy. So how about that? I dropped that. It's stuck right in the little thing in my shirt here. Got lucky. And again, I'd have this way inside here where if I dropped it, it would have gone in here. So, take some of this, come over, spray that in there, get that wet again because it's been sitting out. Take my little brush, scrub, scrub, scrub. 
the paint will build up on here. And when I uh, change color, I take this off and uh, clean it. It only takes a second. And that way I don't get a big build up of goo in there from, uh, from the paint that doesn't fly all the way out. I like this cap um, because I'm in such a tight, tight area that that cap keeps me from banging that jet or that needle. Look at, see that should look brand new when you're done, just like that every time. If it doesn't, clean it. Now we're gonna put the needle back in and I take my finger, put it on here because if I get shaky, I do not wanna bend this needle. These needles are nice and straight. And when you come in here, easy all the way down because it has to go down past your um, your valve or your trigger and it could bump up on that trigger a little bit and then I just ease it down all the way to the end so when it stops it stops you don't have to jam it down in there it's good tighten that up and I do give that a good snug tight nice there take the cap Put the cap back on, mindful of that little O-ring. Bring it down just a little bit past, you know, you don't have to crank it. Put the cap back on. Keep dust out of that thing while it sits. Put your back on. And I'm going to show you something with a back, too, um, that you might like or you might not. I never use it. But this piece is actually a paint adjuster. See, I can turn that all the way in, and it locks this. All I got is air. I can't pull it back. And then I can throttle this back a little at a time. And that, that goes a long way. See there? To where, again, with nothing, to all the way back. Now, I leave it all the way back, because you saw with that blue... What I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm throttling the, the paint back. It's rare that I'll ever go back to the stop, but I'll throttle that paint back and forth with this as I see how it's hitting the, the uh, styrene. And that way, you know, I can go with a really, real light coat like I did on the tack coat at the beginning, a real light coat. And then the next time I come by, I'll come back a little bit harder and then the third time I come by, boy, I'm coming back about three quarters of the way on this thing. And I'm giving a nice heavy coat to give it that shine. <laughs> uh, come on, man. I mean, really? How, how, how is that bad? Now you saw how this works. Just take it, put it in there and pull it back and blow the rest of the paint out. You can blow the solvent out of it too. Like when you're changing uh, colors. Let's okay. Let's say we're changing colors. All right. I just, I just ran the blue through there. What I'll do is I'll come in here. I'll put some solvent in. I want to show you this because this is really neat. And I don't need paint in there to do this. I'll put some solvent in there. Let's put a good amount just so you can see it. This is after I've already wiped it out with a little towel or. Like I said, I used to use paper towels. And now I would turn my air compressor way down. So now I'm throwing my air compressor out of adjustment too with my old one because that was a throttle, you know, I had a knob that I had to control it with. This one, I'm just going to push this once, twice to the red. And watch this. Put my finger on here, pull this back. And what it does is it washes out this chamber right here. See how cool that is? The other way you can do that, and this, you do that same thing with, if you get a clog, dump your paint out. Um, try that first. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to start taking it apart to where we were before. But nine times out of ten, if you get a clog and you, you boil the paint backwards in there, it'll clear that out and break it up. 
and then you can wipe it out dry, blow out the solvent, um, and then put your paint back in and go from there. But here's another thing you can do too, is you can take this, this back one. Remember there was an O-ring there. Take that and pull it back. Now I broke the seal on the O-ring. Not enough, I didn't. And see? And now it's not blowing out as much. But the same thing, I'm pushing, the air's not going out through the jet. It's coming back through this way, so it's not trying to pull the paint through. You can go either way. This way, if you got a clog, I'm not going to do it. Cause, well, you know what? The heck with it. Watch. <laughs> you can push the paint back out through there. It'll clear your clog. <laughs> but that's that's the way I usually clear a clog. And and to be honest with you, the way I mix my paint and the way I clean at the end, I have only had one clog the whole time I've been doing this, and that was using um, Vallejo's. As a matter of fact, it was this Vallejo Surface Primer. And I I think what happened is I, I, I don't use filters to thin the paint or to filter the paint, which I should. I should start getting them. But I think what happened was it... Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this out to get all that solvent out of there. I think what happened, though, is a little part... Uh, piece of paint went down there that was flaked and clogged it so when I put that in there and I blew it back out it cleared it right out I was able to finish everything I needed to do and it was a win for me so there we go we are good to go for another day let's put this away